Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman by heading over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash g-a-m-e-f-u-l-l-y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Halbkast mit Tom Reimann an David Bell. We're recording. Oh, well, hey, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the episode of Hypecast. Hype. Hype, hype. Hypecast. Sure, we get hyped about stuff and or things, possibly. I'm your co-host, Tom Ryman. I'm your other co-host, David Bell. And I'm guest Starlene Hodge. Hi. Hey. Welcome. Hi, hi. How are so, you? I'm okay. I'm tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're all tired. We're all tired. <laughs> We all just ate. <laughs> yeah, this is what we're doing. Uh, we're doing a kind of a late one. Yeah, I've been. I don't want to say what I've been writing about all day because it's for some more news. So I don't know. You hear. Uh, you'll hear I the content yeah. of it at you'll, some you'll, point. You'll read it. You'll, 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 you'll hear. See it eventually, and you'll know why he's so tired. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not even tired. I'm drinking an energy drink. My brain is just. That's lost a form of hope. tired. Yeah, you're like true. you're like emotional, mentally exhausted. Yes. Yeah, I haven't even. That's like, I haven't even actually started writing it. I've just been researching. Oh it. God, that's, yep. That's oof. Mm. I'm sorry, Dave. It's been a harrowing day. <laughs> it's been a real bone chilling day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, we should probably get to the trailers right Let's away. Let's fucking do this. Let's Speaking of harrowing, fucking shit, bone chilling things. First trailer is Game of Thrones. Woo! Yeah. Now this is the first trailer for the final season that is actually a trailer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Since uh, everything before this has been just like little teaser images. Yeah. And, and like literally twenty seconds, I mm -hmm. think. Ha it's been like shit that they like shot specifically for the trailers. Right. Because yeah. like they aren't. I'm not even sure. Because I was watching this. Uh, sitting in the same room with dave and the first thing i said was these effects look bad yeah so, and i'm not sure done. they must not be done yeah i i would assume they're waiting to like tweaking up into the last moment yeah probably the dragons and it's all the well, budget they're getting this time around and it's yeah. so i mean they shot so much like each episode is what 90 minutes oh that's right yeah like they shot so they've been working on this for like a year and a half it's uh, yeah. which is part of the problem because honestly i've kind of forgotten I'm rewatching most of it, and now. I just need to watch some summaries on YouTube to kind of catch up. Mm. It's it's fine. It's all fine, right? Game of Thrones. No, it, I mean I really like Game of Thrones. I like I'm it not, too. I'm not. I feel like there's this weird. I'm well, a fan, but I'm. I, it's, it's like I'm tired of yeah. it. I'm just like, okay, I'm ready for it to be done. I feel like and, there's yeah almost. It's not unearned. There's a weird hype around, like, how is it all going to end? What's going to happen? I think that's manufactured solely by the fact that both the books and the show is just taking forever. Yes. Yes. Like, we, it's like this weird mystery. It's like this who shot JR situation. <laughs> where <it's> like, <laughs> what's going to happen? And it's like, it's probably going to end um, in a pretty straightforward way. Well, the, but there's there are several ways it could end. Yeah. That are all straightforward. I feel yeah. like I'm not as excited about it because I, I like the books and since now that these last seasons are just like they're doing whatever they want to do yeah because of why wouldn't you do that at this point because there's no books yeah um so part of me is just like i'm like i'm not gonna i don't feel like i'm gonna feel it because it's not it's not like for real for real for real yeah. for real i'm like oh this is just like this is like a really really expensive au thing like this is when i was re when before like the seventh harry potter book came out i read so much fan fiction because i was like i need a fix right and so i read so many versions and some of them kind of yeah got close to like the actual ending to harry potter but not quite and that's this is what this feels to me like it's no, like is, oh you're so close it's game of thrones methadone yeah like because yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, have because yeah. they know 
the bro- they know the basic broad strokes of the plot. Right. So though that stuff is probably largely going to be correct. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at it like, I mean, obviously, hopefully he finishes them before he dies and doesn't pull a Robert Jordan on everybody. I hope he at least has like the summaries and everything ready to go so that right. even if he did, somebody could be like, we could fill this in. Yeah. I haven't read the books and I but, am kind of glad I haven't because people are oh, very a, frustrated. You're going to have a better experience with, I think, the show because of that. Yes. Yeah. I've been I've been enjoying the show, yeah. For that, it, the reason. tables I mean, have it, turned. It, it's, it. <laughs> it's the same with the Harry Potters. I never read the Harry Potters, and I watched. Ah, oh, shit! What was the third one? The Azkaban. 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 That one's the I best one, that, uh, right? But uh, there was a lot of Harry Potter fans, or at least around me at the time, who hated it. And I watched that movie, and I was like, "That's a great movie." And all my friends were like, "They didn't do it right." And well, I'm like, "It doesn't. It's great. It's a great movie." It's it's. I don't know that one. Oh. Oh, Alexa <laughs> just chimed in. <laughs> Alexa, She's okay. What do you think about the Game of Thrones trailer? I don't have an opinion on that. That's fair. Why that not? Fair. Oh, um, she didn't. She 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 tuned out. She clammed up. Oh, man. <laughs> I like freezing us out. Everybody's at home is probably also weighing in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Okay. You just said some weird combo of her name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something happened. No, it's um, I. I'm excited to get to the books whenever they come out because yes. that'll be like okay, that's like the actual story. Sure. But like, I can't wait another ten years or however long it's going oh, to take him to finish those a, last. It literally two books. takes him a decade between books. Yeah, so For almost the first one was published in '96. Yeah, the yeah. most recent one was published in 2011. Yep. Ugh. Um. See, that's exhausting. And between yeah. that one and that one, I think there was like a ten year gap. Man, something like that it was like. Which was dumb because it was like that was the book he split in half, mm-hmm. and you're like, so what? An what? Wait, <laughs> you yeah, had like uh, half of this story, fe- Feast for Crows and Dance of Dragons. Yeah, they're the out. same timeline. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like, just so what did damn. You do? Much. Why? Yeah. Why did you do that? So like, I have to know, like, knowing like how the story is basically going to end is going to like I'm, I'm going to feel that. Yeah, I'm like um, oh, okay. I guess these and like I don't right, trust these... the show's versions of who survives. I'm like, no, well, that doesn't tell that's me anything. It's all. There's there's characters that are that are dead in the show that are not in the book and, but, and vice versa. So but. this show is just like vague spoilers for the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The show also got. I'm assuming whoever's if there is a a, a throne at the end of it, um, right. Whoever's at the end of that will probably be the one in the book. Mm-hmm. Sure. M- or maybe not because who God knows how many combo characters I, that they like. They're like yeah. this, these three characters are going to be one person in the well, show. I think the main ones, <laughs> like the what happens to all the main people, I think will probably be that what happens. I'm scared they're going to twist it unnecessarily because it's it's Jon Snow is like he's the hero more or less. Yeah, right. the, but heroes he don't do well in the king. show, right? But. It could, I think people might be disappointed to realize that it might still just be a traditional, because heroes don't do well. If you think of it like a movie, it's like, of course, the good guys get murdered early on and like tragedy happens and then the good guy prevails at the end. Like it's, that's just how stories go. And this might just be that where it's like, I think he's going to win, but then he'll be cursed or something like he's going to have to like, I mean, he's going to, he's going to like, yeah, he is 100% is. is. She's probably gonna turn evil right oh yeah a hundred percent you think so i don't know they're really they, setting it, would, it up it would there there's she could and there's they're planting the seeds of that a little bit it would be a bummer because it would mean that every single major female character pretty much would be evil right but right they, they are like doing except like an for, anakin except for sansa except sort of aria and sansa yeah and aria is kind of she's a psychopath but like Arya's, she's not yeah. evil <laughs> she's not evil no, she's not awesome. evil but she's she's, 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 she's real <laughs> Yeah. She's a product of her environment. Oh yeah, That's yeah, true. yeah. I yeah. the the Stark sisters are my favorite characters, so I I just root for them. Yeah, the, just, I think they'll, they'll do probably that. be all right. I hope so. I think they're gonna. It's gonna be like because I'm watching the the last season, and the one thing I forgot is that they clearly like they they did the opposite of like running out of book where they're like oh shit we have so much plot left yes and yeah. so like they really start <laughs> rushing it so I wonder yeah. if this season. The final one well, is going to be super rushed. That's why the super long episodes. Yeah, yeah. It's all movie. It's a series of movies. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Just uh, they, I mean, it also it also means they, okay it also means that. they get to pay him less. Oh, that's because they get paid on a per. Nailed it. Oh. Because I was like, I was, I was thinking like they oh. used to. Make- oh yeah. Oh, that's 
<laughs> that's wow. That's diabolical. That's the word. Yeah. They used wow. to make like TV shows with like twenty episodes per season. Twenty two was yeah. And I was yeah. wondering like, well, if they're gonna make these extra long, why not just make more se- uh, that episodes? Makes so much more sense. Yeah, that's it. What mm-hmm. a shit deal. <laughs> yeah. They are, I mean, they're. I mean, they're fine. They yeah. already s- split the season in half. I feel. Like, I more feel bad for like the side characters who are maybe making as much that could make more if they made more episodes or something. I mean, the main every, stars are doing is fine. Is Patrick yeah, yeah, yeah. still alive? Is yeah. Patrick? He's in the trailer. Which okay, one is that? He's Patrick. A, he's, he was like a Tyrion's helper man. He's, he's Tyrion's squire. He's standing next to yeah. Brienne in that battle formation yeah. in the very end. Okay. Yeah, they, they're lining up with... I want, uh, Pod, I want Pod to live because I don't might. know if he lives in the Which book. one? Pod? <laughs> he got left off in the book. I was like, uh, <laughs> I was like, I don't know if you're alive, dude. He's not who in a great this? situation. Pot. He was Tyrion's helper. Okay. And he's oh, he's the one. Who, the joke of like all the prostitutes are like, he's great because apparently he has a big dick. Oh, I that remember guy. him. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like the I don't guy. remember. I have trouble with names in real life, so like this is one of those shows where I'm like, I don't know who any of these well, fucking people. Game are. Game of Thrones, the the novel, the uh, Song of Ice and Fire has over one thousand named characters. Right. Yeah. And it's all just a bunch of like grimy white Sir people somebody from somebody yeah Sir somebody. they also ha- all have like the same 14 names yeah and they doesn't... all look fucking uh, <laughs> yeah. the, and they're the, all regular all names the guys look exactly funny. alike <laughs> yeah. yeah um yeah it's a fun show whatever yeah yeah i i do feel that where i'm like i just i do want this to end so yeah. hbo can take the money they're putting into that and do something else that's also good mm. it's uh it's about fucking time yeah um should we keep going? Yeah, yeah, we should. Next one is Late Night. Okay. Late Night. I'm. Uh, it's one of those things like funny people where it's like, this is about comedy writers. Yeah. I like stuff about comedy writers. Yep. I will therefore watch this. Sure. I am a little tired of the... Uh, the the bo- the the story of where they come in and the boss is just an inexcusable belligerent asshole right yeah and then it's like the the movie is about like but they're like really not that bad it's like no they still are treat their writing think, staff it, it, like it feels, monsters yeah, and it feels like a different version of the devil, devil wears prada, prada yeah. Yeah. right i think meets there's prada, wears prada. <laughs> the devil meets <laughs> prada <laughs> i mean that's a whole other show um i think there's room for it if it's done well i finally got around to watching whiplash which have you seen no, no. i've heard it oh, makes you fuck. sad <laughs> no 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 well okay my reaction to whiplash was and i won't spoil anything credits roll and i went oh oh and stood up and was like oh and went into my room and started writing because <laughs> i was like whoa that was great <laughs> it's just so well crafted as a movie and it's the ending is both like satisfying and unsatisfying in this perfect way um it's not i it didn't make me sad like it's not a depressing movie. It's just, just a satisfying movie. Yeah, it's one where I was watching the trailer at first. And I'm like, all right, this is a drama or whatever. And then just the moment J.K. Simmons walks into the oh, of the, the room, is just like, oh shit, <laughs> and it's just so intense. It's like it's like it's another one like we talked about the movie Eighth Grade, yeah, where it's like it's your 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 palms are sweaty. It's like you're watching Green Room. It's that where you're just like, fuck, but it's not nobody's life is not a horror movie saying late night is going to be like this <laughs> no I, i'm saying that there's it's it's about that same idea which is the mentor who's an asshole but it's done in such a a better not like a fun comedy way um it still has some funny moments i guess but like i guess i'm saying there's room for that story but i know what you mean where this comedy scenario where it's like oh look at this boss from hell like it's there's there's more complex things to there say about that. There might be just that. it might have just been a bad trailer though. Like there was something about yeah. the trailer that I was just like this. I was like I don't hate this, but it does like it's not making me want to go. Well, see yeah, because it. yeah, right. it's it's Emma Thompson and Mindy Kaling, so you're like, oh, that's probably good. But like yeah, the trailer itself is just it seems so rote. Yeah, it's like here's the yeah. cantankerous boss. Oh, her career's in trouble, but the new the the plucky new main yeah, character is going to save her career. Weird. It was just yeah. It's like all weird, right. Like, oh. <laughs> like, sure yeah. i don't know i do like the underdog stuff i like the the like woman in an all-male uh writer's room and stuff 
Um, they, yeah, they are. T- that's that's true. That's they, a very that's yeah. that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. And I it it it's just a good underdog scenario. I think you're right. Uh, that's me being a, a a white guy. Totally didn't acknowledge that. But yeah, it, like there's a moment where Mindy Kaling's like Emma Tom's like, well, what's wrong with me? And she's like, well, you're an old white lady. Yeah, <laughs> right. And then they show the co the the co writers being like, man, I wish I was a woman. I get any job. A woman. And, and they say like, a woman of color. A woman yeah. of color. So I, I wish I was like, a woman what? of color. Yeah. And of course, they're all white guys <laughs> yeah. working this job. Yeah. I yeah. thought that I appreciated that. Yeah. Um, That's why I think like the trailer itself. I was just like. I was like, these are good ideas to tackle. Mm-hmm. I was like, but you're presenting them in a way that's making me go, eh. Hey, the tra- Instead the tra- of like, yeah. I'm like, I, I want to see this idea played out. That would be cool. Yeah, I just, for sure. man. Make it just a tra- yeah, I gotta have a whiplash night where we watch Whiplash because I would like to see this scenario <laughs> done with the tone of Whiplash, where it's not just like a zany comedy. Yeah, where it's not her on the phone getting hit with a trash bag on the street, which made me laugh in the trailer. But it's dumb comedy is in this. Like, the tone... It's very cornball. Yeah. Um, is that all we want to say about Late Night? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's ho- hopefully it'll, it, hopefully it's a little more nuanced. Because <laughs> it, it is... Because e- Emma's doing great right now. Oh, yeah, social she's Social media-wise. She, she, quit, she quit that animation thing because they hired John Lasseter. Yep. Oh, yeah. She's just like, fuck this. Uh, her no. letter. Her letter was... <laughs> Mm. so like i'm <laughs> so i'm like i i'm 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 excited to like i will watch this in support of her and up when mindy's great too so yeah. like i want i want this to do well um but it's um, a cool it's yeah there's a there's a lot i like the people yeah i like, I the, like people. the people and it yeah it, it's a cool thing to address yeah um that doesn't get addressed in movies or television yeah. um all right Let's move on to Good Omens. This should be a bigger deal, I think. I, I think it's 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 building up. It looks okay. fun. It looks really really yeah. fun. Well, I've been hearing about this. Well, we first featured it on Hypecast, I think, a year ago. Well, I I heard about this in like high school, like for no maybe maybe my twenties. Well, no, what I mean is I heard about them being like they're going to make a Good Omens movie, mm-hmm. and people have been talking about it for so long. But I, I just had a lot of nerd friends who were very excited about this movie. This is Neil Gaiman, right? And Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett, which that alone is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're making a series out of it. Yeah, it's or a mini series. It, yeah, that is probably better. Like, I maybe that's why it took so long. Like, they never they couldn't could... condense it into a way that was yeah appropriate which would that's good if you're like hey there's this is too good of a story to try yeah and we have so many like yeah we have so many options now with with the way streaming is that doing a mini series now doesn't mean the same thing that it did in the 90s where it'll, well, be, it'll be kind of like cheese ball and yeah. that's what i was, mean it still kind of looks cheese ball like the effects special effects look like oh, yeah. really corny but because it's david Tennant. And I'm forgetting the other guy's Michael name. Sheen. Michael yeah. Sheen. Michael Sheen. Wasn't he the the master in Doctor Who too? Didn't weren't they like together? I don't know. For a while? He might he might have been. I'm not Maybe. sure. Maybe I might be wrong on that. But I was just like, I feel like I've seen these two on the same screen before. Oh jeez. Maybe they're both British. Yeah. 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 yeah they those, probably live together. Guys hang out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all live in the same gigantic shoe. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tennant's Scottish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, all yeah, the it same. It's all the same. <laughs> um. <laughs> So uh, many, your overseas listeners are yeah. like, not God sorry. damn it. Not sorry, you guys. <laughs> We're not the same. What are you going to do about it? We're not you gonna come here? Are you going to come here? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I was just going to say, yeah, I think it is that like in the 90s or in the 2000s, they're like, we should make this a mini series, but we can't say fuck. And that's like one of the things streaming has brought us. It's that's cursing. a wonderful gift is you can make a mini series and say fuck. And mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah. That's one. You put more money into it. Yeah, and money. This is an Amazon venture. So yeah, it's got a couple of bucks behind it. The premise yeah. seems fun. It looks good. Yeah. yeah, it looks. It's got good. Got John Hamm in it. John Hamm like is a God. weird. Yeah, well, or, or, or is he Benedict Michael? Cumberbatch is in it too. I think, he's, I think just he's the one devil. One of the angels. Because I know I looked this yeah. up at some point. He plays some. He's he plays a prominent like biblical name. Okay, I yeah. I was gonna say I'm like I don't think I think all those. All these God movies never ever show God unless it's like part of the joke. 
That's otherwise, true. it's always like a the Lance, vague, or it's Alanis Morissette, yeah. or it's Steve Buscemi, yeah, or Morgan Freeman, or Morgan Freeman, right? Yeah, Alanis Morissette is the weirdest one, I think. It was it was going to be Emma Thompson? Was it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Alan Rickman was like when they were making Dogma. Alan Rickman was like, "I can get Emma Thompson for this." We're it's friends. like sure, and Kevin was like, "Yeah, sure," but like she wasn't able to do it because I think she was pregnant. Oh. Okay, I also know that I Lance mean, that Morissette as a visual would have been amazing, yeah. Yeah. right? Like, oh my god, that would have that. Oh, yeah, that would have been awesome. would have nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> I know Alanis Morissette. This is off topic, but I know she like came out as a critic of um the like mall rats or like one of his movies like she hated jay and silent bob sure and kevin smith like met with her after learning that and they had like a long conversation and then she did a, wrote like a foreword for one of the comics and agreed to be in dogma so i think there was some sort of i don't know what they the hell hashed happened. it out yeah they hashed it out in some way cool which is yeah this looks this looks uh looks fun yeah. yeah, Good Omens. I'll watch this. Everybody ch- check out Good Omens. <laughs> when it comes out, it comes out in May, so you got some time. Yeah. Um. All right. It's actually not that far away. No, it's, it's already not. March. I know. Time actually, is... Like, Jesus April's Christ. right here. I was like, oh, April's going to be here in a second. Yeah. Time is a freight train. It just won't <laughs> yeah. stop. It's fucking blasting us apart. Yeah. Um. Relentlessly. <laughs> all right. The next one is Shazam. I really liked this trailer. I thought it was really cute. I don't know why it didn't do anything for me. I recognize that it's a cute trailer mm-hmm. and that I I I didn't get it didn't get a single like laugh out of me or like a f- Really? I, yeah, I mean I'll see it. Um I laughed pretty hard when he picked up Batman and Batman says I'm Batman. He says get him Batman and he throws it at the guy. Oh, that was kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think I chuckled more at the at the teaser trailer for it. Yeah, I think I did too, actually. Um but I think this is another case of I'm like I feel like the trailer's cut weird. I'm like, I there's no reason for me to not like this movie. Right. You know, I'm like, oh, it's like it's a I and I hope they like at some point deal with the fact that it is a kid. Yeah, they're gonna have like body. a are they gonna have like a big scenario where some poor woman is gonna be accidentally uh like a pedophile? They might. They might yeah. I don't know. It looks like they're going more for a tone of the sillier aspects of, of yeah. big. Yeah. But I think I think mostly because when I I was like I don't know who Shazam is and then at the time, people kept posting this image of Superman talking to the wizard that gave him this kid these powers and mm-hmm. just being like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Yeah, and he's like, "This is the <laughs> one." And the wizard's like, he's like, "He's a kid." That's great. What are you doing? Because like the kid like, it's a like child had soldier. just like experienced like something really tragic, you know. And everyone's just like, "You're an adult." Why? And they realized it was a child, and they're like, "Oh no!" Yeah, this is <laughs> that comes real up a lot. Bad. <laughs> yeah. Comes up a lot that that's a little boy. Yeah, and you're like, huh. "Oh no!" Because they made him older in the movie, right? They made him yeah, fifteen apparently. Yeah, because in the how old is in- he's like a. Like he's, like he's like, like nine. He's like nine, ten. L- he's a little kid. Oh, that's dark. That's pretty great, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is more fun to have a fifteen-year-old, just because. And they show it in this, which is the buying beer. But thing, yeah, you can do yeah. more. You oh, can do more okay, like yeah, yeah. dickhead teenager things. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love the premise of this. Mm. I think it might just be the trailer itself. There was something I, about it I liked the that trailer. just. Huh. I know that it just didn't. It just didn't. Maybe I mean. I don't know, I'll watch it again, but no, I it's not it. changing my opinion. I want to see, see this it. movie. This is yeah. the only like, DC movie. Oh, maybe Wonder Woman 2 I'm looking forward to. But, oh, like, yeah. This is the only DC superhero movie outside of Wonder Woman that I've been like, all right, I'm gonna. right, I'm looking forward to going did you see doing this. Did you see the Aquaman? I did not see the Aquaman. I listened to you guys' review of the oh, Aquaman, okay. and I was, oh, like, that, oh, I was like, that sounds delightful. Aquaman. I'll watch it eventually. It's pretty delightful, yeah. yeah. Was, was, I, well, you guys comparing it to Jupiter Ascending made me go. I'm like, okay, I kind of want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jupiter Ascending. Because I like Jupiter Ascending because it's absurd. It is. They. It's a. It's yeah. a big swing. Yeah. They took a real big swing there. Yeah, they sure did. Um. All right. Brightburn. I hate you, Dave. <laughs> I, Have you seen the first trailer for Brightburn? Yes, you okay. guys showed it to me, and I was just like, "Oh, I don't like this." Oh, okay, and then now I was like, "Oh shit!" Oh, and I saw that again? on there. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, "Oh no!" Now it's more of it, and I was we like, "Oh no, again. I don't like this at all." <laughs> I didn't either. They, sh- I'm bummed at this. I'm mad at this trailer. They showed too much. It's one trailer too many. Yep. Um, like which the trailer is, we watched before was I was like, was like so amped to see it, yeah. and like this one, they've shown us the entire movie. It's tough because like, I think. 
with trailers, it's like they have to put out like I think three before the movie comes out, then TV spots. And I think if uh, if you're a marketing company, you're not allowed to just do the same trailer over and over again. So I feel like it's that where like that first trailer should have been the only thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, but they ha they're obligated to make more, I assume. Because yeah, this I, one, this one did make me go like the first one. May, I was just like, oh, that's really spooky and scary. God, I kind of don't want to see it because I don't like horror. But there was a chance. Right. Now that I've seen this full trailer, where I was like, oh, this is full on horror. Mm-hmm. Oh God, right. oh God, I'm not going to go see it. Yeah, and it also, I I don't want to because I I still don't know what the movie is, but I'm sort of disappointed by what they did show us because it it's pretty straightforward. Yep. It's just like, oh yeah, now the cops gonna investigate the murder. And then she, they're going to find out that he's evil, and then the parents are going to have to deal with him. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like I almost wanted something more like abstract or surreal or like epic. Like, I, I, I'm still hoping that's the case. Like, I don't know. This is just such a – it's such a scary premise. Yeah. But I feel like what's going to happen is they're not going to explore any more than she's going to find his kryptonite. And then have to be forced to kill her son at the end. And it's not going to last that. Like, I don't know. I, I almost want something that takes place over a longer amount of time or just doesn't go. And maybe it still will. But I want to be surprised by this movie. I mean, if that's the case, the ending, I mean, that sounds like the ending is like the kid seems he's dead and then his eyes open kind of. Yeah, I could see that. This- yeah, they just end it the same way that Batman v Superman ends. Yeah. yeah. It's like dirt rising off of his god. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, they could do that. You could. <laughs> and it would be, be kind of scary <laughs> in that movie. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I was bummed out by this trailer. Yeah. I, I Yeah, it's really... I, I, I'm not sure if I'm bummed out by the trailer or bummed out that the trailer showed me a more movie and I didn't care for what I saw as much. Like the shot where he's busting through the kitchen. Yeah. Like I didn't think nope. that was a great shot. Don't need no, that. that wasn't. It that was, was like pretty... a comedy shot. But that might not shot. be in like the final That was pretty thing. bad. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Let's move. That sucks. This is one of my most anticipated movies of the year. Yeah. I mean, I'm still going to see it. I'm, I'm just going to trailer... see it. This trailer is fucking sucks. Yeah. I'm mad at it. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Um, this next one is Midsummer. No. Somar. Midsomar. Midsomar. No. You're not you're not interested? No. I'm that was a big old it. nope for me. <laughs> I mean I, I like hereditary. Um I, I put it in this though, is that the Apostle or Apostle and the Endless and the Sacrament are all three really good movies about cults. Yeah. Um I honestly don't know what more they can say about the subject. We've covered so and like we just had a remake of Suspiria. It's like yeah. we've covered every possible angle of a weird cult so i don't i'm also i'm also at a point in like movie watching where i'm like I, there's no excuse not to have diversity i don't care for shit anymore and i was just like oh, oh. right and i was just like oh it's like a blindingly white oh kid. yeah, yeah i was just like nice. i was just like oh i mean mind you like a part of me is just like well kind of good because i don't i'm like well i don't think any of of <laughs> like and it, it may be a lot of like oh this isn't us this is definitely a white people thing yeah but right. at the same time i'm like eh, you could have figured out a way yeah unless you could have figured out something yeah. you could have had <laughs> unless it's like specifically like i was about to say unless it's the point yeah unless it's specifically the point um yeah but i don't it just it doesn't look like Hereditary, I go back and forth on. Like, it has some undeniably great imagery in it, but I think as a movie, it's not very good. No, like it, um, it's it's the the plot itself isn't anything it's nonsense new. But what <laughs> made that movie great for me was just that the imagery really stuck. Oh yeah, it's it's um, it's very striking. Um, this movie, like the Hereditary trailer, got me though. This movie, like, it just looks so boring to me. Right. Mm. Like I don't. Yeah, that's care. sort of it. Is that right now? I'm not. I agree that, that nothing in this trailer is appealing to me. I mean, they might be trying to keep what. I mean, this might be the opposite thing where they're like, we don't want to give away the whole movie. Yeah. So we're just showing you like these boring parts. Yeah. yeah. There might be more. Hereditary gave me enough goodwill that I will see it because I see everything horror related anyway. Mm. But yeah, if they like, all I really needed was someone to be like, hey, this is the director of Hered- Her- Hereditary's new film watch it and i would have been like yeah i'm gonna watch this yeah yeah this trailer did not this it's not a 
They, yeah, like ew. for me, it's mostly the cult thing. Cults are like scary kids now, where it's like, <laughs> oh, another scary kid movie. All yeah, right, because it ends I'm with so like bored with that. She's peeking through a keyhole, and you hear this weird wailing and yeah. moaning on the other side like, of the oh, door. It's like, an orgy, like, right? like I know exactly what that yeah. is. It's a blood orgy. We've seen it in so many cult movies. Yeah, now. exactly. <clears throat> it's just yeah. This is why I, I, I've been trying to bring myself to watch The Hole in the Ground, which is it's on streaming on s- now. Streaming, and that's one where a really cool, quick, like starting idea. And then like, and it's a scary kid. I'm just thinking like, what if it's not a blood up blood orgy? And it's just like, I'm trying to think of what would just be like creepy, but also dumb. Like a hot yoga class. <laughs> yeah. But also blood. But they're all making weird chanting noises. <laughs> Again, there are ways to do it. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> like the endless it's is not really actually. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> the endless isn't actually about a cult. No. Um, so if it's something like that, <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe yeah, where it's starting at the premise of a cult and then spinning the, off. The premise of the endless though grabs you from the beginning. Yeah, because the trailer makes it look. What could they do to great. make it like if uh, like not aliens? Because I feel like that's also been done. I don't know. Where, that, I, where I would, it would be like, what is the I don't know, some kind of some kind of hook that's not just like it's a weird cult, but things aren't what they seem. I'm like, that's every cult movie. What's the hook? Yeah. There? I feel like there hasn't been a cult movie where the cult is 100% correct, which um, is a dangerous mm-hmm. premise. Is that, is that, that's I don't want to spoil. Oh yeah, that's actually, well, they're like, yeah, okay. That's a lot of them. That's a lot of them, <laughs> but like they're, they're correct in like a dark way. And in not a good way. Yeah. I liked this. Did you guys see the sacrament? No. Mm-mm. You wouldn't have seen the sacrament. Nope. Sacrament, it's, what's his name? It's, I think it's, it's the guy who did, um, it might be Mike Flanagan. I think you're uh, maybe it's someone it, it's either him or uh, I would look it up. But I don't want to. Um, it's someone who's made a lot of good horror movies. Um, and that one's just straight up. Here's Jonestown. And it's horrifying because there's it nothing is, it is supernatural Flanagan. about it. Is Flanagan, it. I'm pretty yeah. Sure. It's just like, yeah, this is what it it's would be Jonestown. like to be in this. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is awful. Yeah. Um, which was great. But yeah, I don't. I don't know. We'll see where this goes. Because, yeah, um, maybe it is very little about a cult. Or like The Invitation. Yeah, The Invitation is a good one. Creepy. M- th- this Midsummer might just be the marketing where they're like, yeah. well, this is the most marketable aspect of this. A bunch of creepy yeah, pe- Dutch looking people. Yeah, real Dutch looking. Real, real, real it was Netherlands very, yeah, motherfuckers. It was very light blonde, blue eyed. Yeah, yeah. Pale and the people. lady speaking had some kind of accent. I think. I assume. Yeah, I assume that's got to be deliberate for some reason. I mean, Midsummer or whatever the way it's spelled yeah. is very like Nordic, isn't it? Is it? It's definitely European. Okay. So, I don't know. We'll see. <sighs> yeah, I'll, I'll probably I'll... still watch it, but I won't be happy about. Yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I it's it's all <laughs> I, you know. I've, fucking other people who pick and choose horror movies maybe watch this and judge for yourself yeah me it's just like yeah of course i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna i'm gonna watch everything um mm. it is my curse yeah I was like you do that to yourself my burden yeah. i love them horror movies um what's next framing john delorean what is this this is the <laughs> weirdest fucking thing it's a it's a it's a documentary about john delorean and also a reenactment? Uh, a, a making of a reenactment. Okay, yeah, that's what I was really... Because there's a making of element to it. Because I really liked how this was edited, and I liked the sound design of the trailer. I was like, I'm really into all of this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I didn't I understand the the what the hell I was watching. I was I, like, what is with Alec Baldwin? What and, is he doing? And like scenes with Alec Baldwin talking about playing jo- uh, John DeLorean, and it's weird. Here, all right. It, I, my Weird decisions. My cynical guess is that they're trying to do a big, a big short situation where they're trying to tell a true story in a creative way. Oh, like American Splendor. Yeah. Um, my less cynical version is that what if the making of the the movie somehow became just as interesting as what they were doing? Like the idea, and this is not what happened because that would be. That would be a mess. But like the idea that Alec Baldwin playing John DeLorean and like researching him became its own story as well. Yeah. Um, like he, Alec Baldwin used the movie's production to like yeah. launder his cocaine money. Yeah. Much in the way John yeah, DeLorean Alec Baldwin did. is still like 
culturally canceled, right? Say what? Is Alec Baldwin is he culturally canceled? Like is he? I, like... I think so. I've canceled him. I because th- he's he's a real asshole. I don't think enough people have. Okay, because yeah. he's a real dick. Because I'm like I'm intrigued by this is a trailer that did its job where I'm like I'm interested, and then I was like oh but I Alec would, Baldwin I'm right. Like, I'm... I would just watch a I would be this movie does look interesting. I would be much more excited about just a straight up documentary about John DeLorean. Yes, yeah, same, same. Or or a biopic. Um, yeah. Either way, they're doing like the did you ever see the fourth kind? The fourth kind was a, a fake it was a it was a found footage. It was it was like a found footage horror, but it was a reenactment. Yeah. And so they got Mila Jovovich to reenact the scenes and they would put the quote unquote real sequences and footage next to her but the 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 truth was none of it was real so they just hired two sets of actors ones that looked more like regular people and then they got mila jovovich and like big hollywood actors to play it so it was all fake but they did it they 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 went through so many so much length to make it seem like it was real um which i guess made it more effective because it's about alien abduction but at the end, when you look that up, you're just like, you tricked me. <laughs> like, fuck you, movie. That was useless. Um, my point is that they might be doing something like that with this, where like they're not going to really tell the correct story, and they're just trying to put so many layers on that well, we they think have what we're watching is cool. They have genuine footage of John DeLorean. Right. And then also Alec Baldwin with insane fake eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. The, I was going to say the makeup was pretty good. I was like, oh, you look like the guy. Yeah. He do, yeah I mean, yeah, he does look pretty similar. It's just eyebrows, man. <laughs> They're so cartoonish. <laughs> I can't believe nobody pulled John DeLorean aside and was like, you serious? Is he still alive? Oh, no. Okay. no he's been dead for a while. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. To, I, this is a story I want to hear about. It's, for it's sure. an insane story. Um, I know the the molds for the DeLoreans have been used like, oh, God, I wrote a cracked article about this. I don't remember the specific details that you they found them years later being used by like fishing boats as anchors or something. Oh. It's something really insane where like they like <laughs> the molds got like thrown away and then yeah. some other company got them and stuff. And then someone finally found like. You're using DeLorean molds for this like mundane fishing task. <laughs> I mean, they were notoriously terrible yes. cars. They were I mean, they're more recently featured in the new Solange music video. Oh really? She dances around like a array of DeLoreans and I was just like, Oh, that's that's weird. <laughs> that's weird that I just watched this other trailer and now this new music video is out and I'm like, There's DeLoreans in this. Huh. <laughs> They're not just like bad cars. They're they're obviously bad cars. Like just the doors and the way they open. It's just like so you can't park that in a garage, huh? (laughs) Like you can't yeah. You can't park that anywhere. The bat wings. Yeah, it's just uh, at least Lamborghini slides up and not out. (laughs) It's so obviously (laughs) bad. (laughs) I mean he just did it to to launder his cocaine money. Yeah. Oh that's pretty such sure. A, that's pretty such sure. an eighties thing to do. Oh yeah, he's the most he's the most nineteen eighties man that could have ever possibly existed. Yeah, which I'm glad that that's why I, I do like the design of this, the eighties design. It's yeah. not just feeding off n- nostalgia; it is really a very eighties story. Yeah. Um, he's a super eighties dude. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's like if 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 the eighties <laughs> fell into a vat of chemicals and became a man. Yeah. Oh it would God. Be John DeLorean. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Final trailer is someone great. Um, sorry, you sort of in your notes said it well, which is cute. Which, yeah. Yeah, it was cute. It's just, it was like, oh, okay. Did I miss this one? I don't know. It's a Netflix next netflix movie it's it's like a lady is going into a long distance she gets a job from, from she's she's dating a dude from according to the trailer she's dating this dude for like nine years great relationship she gets a job in san francisco there it's based in new york and mm-hmm. she's like trying to do she goes to the guy like i'm taking this job we're gonna try to do this long distance thing and he's just like no <laughs> <laughs> i definitely missed this trailer. Like, and he's oh, okay. like, no i'm not and then so it's like the it's after right. breakup and her just wanting like a last hurrah in and New she York with her like girlfriends. Bots and them while she's out. Kind of like that. 
it's like dealing dealing with that dealing with starting a new life slash like friendship movie it looks cute it, it looks, looks like cute. a cute story i'm mm-hmm. scared the trailer does the one thing where she sees him like at the club and they have another connection like the they make eyes at each other and that was the only thing where i was like oh god i hope she doesn't pick the guy and not move for her career i have a feeling it's gonna be he's gonna move yeah that's that sounds he's, about right he's gonna he's gonna be like okay i'll leave new york and we'll go right. to san francisco yeah and, because his whole thing in the beginning on. in the beginning of the trailer he was just like i'm not ready to leave new york yet that's dumb. New York is a terrible guys, can, place. Did you guys hear me roll my eyes? <laughs> New York is like I'm not ready the to worst. Leave New York for San Francisco. Yeah, Get so it's just like you've here, been man. with her for nine fucking years. Nine years. It's nine years. That's what that's what the trailer said. Like yeah, they met. New York, they show the moment they meet. They show the like she gets the job. They show the breakup and then her like dealing. That's all right. I so mean, I'm it's like, still he's like gonna a, move. Yeah, like, that's the ending. Or she's gonna be like, "Fuck, I didn't need you after all." Yeah. And then it's gonna be like, "All right, fine." Should have got rid of your ass years ago. The like going out and partying stuff looks cool, but like, how did it come to that? How did they not discuss this when she was like applying, applying for the for job? The job? Right. Yeah, like did they not? They've been together for I nine mean, it years. It, I mean. You could write that away as like he didn't think she'd actually get it, right? Yeah, you know. But then, yeah, they're yeah. just a. They're that's just a whole, bad. That's a whole other problem yeah. with that relationship. Well, well, yeah, well, it's <laughs> yeah. just like, oh, then. Wait, so you didn't take me seriously? So that's why it's good that you broke up, yeah. then, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it looks cute. It looks fine. Gina Rodriguez needs to like. Which, oh, is it Gina Who's Rodriguez? That? Yeah, okay. she's the main person. She's she's still. Uh, I'll say Black Twitter's still mad at her. <laughs> Uh, but she's. I. I feel like she could fix that. It's not a. She could fix it. It's fine. She yeah. like. She had some issues. Um, with the like some colorism situation and, um, if I remember right, cause this was a while ago. Um, and it was like three separate little tiny incidents that made people go like, "Are you anti-black?" Oh, I vaguely remember. It's oh. like that, where it's like not huge, not enough to like completely cancel a person, right. but enough to be like shifty eye at you. Yeah. Because it's a little. It's one of those things where they weird. could like address it and talk about it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And like her latest thing, like she was on some interview and she, because it was brought up and she started bawling and it was just like, my dad is black and da 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 and all this stuff. And then when people looked at pictures of her dad, they're like, he's no like well not black she said my dad is dark skinned <laughs> uh and we, people looked up and it was like no you no, he's not he's that that's not a dark skinned latino man he's very much he's latino but he's not hmm. your issues with colorism still problematic so <laughs> dave don't die I'm dying. um I'm dying. so that's don't, what's don't going on anymore. like the her i think if i remember just so that like the audience knows uh, it was when Black Panther came out, every, you know, everybody's excited. And she mentioned something about like, oh, when are we going to get like a mainstream Latino hero? And everyone was just like, we just got this. And also, so why why weren't you saying this when all the other like oh, I remember white that. movies yeah, are out? Yeah, like yeah. you could say it then too. Why yeah. jump on this when another right. like minority group finally got a thing? Why are you harping on the minority group and not... Yeah, all the other movies, and right? So, not and the then, people who and, are actually the gatekeepers here. Yeah, and and that started it, and then it kind of like like mini snowballs from there. Because instead of just being like, "Oh my bad," she kind of like just started doubling down. Yeah, I remember. And that. then there was like a bunch of like it was just tiny things that built up into like a thing. <laughs> um, and yeah, this latest thing of like my dad's dark skinned and da da da, and she's like, "No, he's definitely not." <laughs> so you're like, ah. But I mean, I still watched Carmen San Diego. It was a good cartoon. <laughs> It's like so I'm like I'm like eh, shifty eye, but you keep just just talk to some people who could explain it and then <laughs> yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be fine. It reminds me of like Ian McKellen had some weird statement recently. Yeah, oh, Terry Crews also had the issue last week. <laughs> yeah. But Ian McKellen, yeah, it was one of those things where he just sort of like put out a statement later. It was just like, Oh, I see how that was really insensitive. Yeah. And Terry finally made apologize. a had a conversation too with one of the Brooklyn Nine Nine co stars. Who's yeah, just yeah. like, hey, so um, as as a as a, she was saying to him, like she he she didn't say exactly what was said, but essentially because the other cast member is a um, a member of the LBGQ community, was just like, hey, this is why what you said was really hurtful, <laughs> and since he's actually like friends with her, it was just like, oh, yeah, and then gave a, like a yeah. real apology. Yeah, and then he came on and was like, yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, mm, but all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, those are just learning experiences. Yeah, yeah. it's like I oh, people give people a chance to grow, but also. I get. I start shifty eye. I guess I'm just right. Like, you can you, you, you can shoot them some side eye when they come. Like, in the room okay, like, mm. all right. Are you gonna behave? <laughs> <laughs> Which is like people. Yeah, it's all people. Yeah, They're just know. like mm, God. Yeah. okay. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think that's uh, uh, this isn't quite the same. But the Alec Baldwin thing, the reason why he's still around is I feel like it's from. I mean, someone correct me if I'm wrong. <coughs> I'm choking on Monster Stop Energy drink. Dying. <laughs> Now everybody's some, doing it. I Jesus. drink Monster Energy Drink. I'm drinking Rehab, which is tea and lemonade. So and it's like it's a energy my, drink it's Arnold Palmer. in my throat for some reason. And it's... An, I'm not sure why. I, I, didn't, I didn't know Liquid could do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alec Baldwin, though, he's just been a major asshole and an abusive father, right? Yes. That's yes. so sorry if I remember. <laughs> and so I think that's why he's still around is because... He's shitty to his family. Yeah, where it's the Christian Bale thing, where Christian Bale like screamed at his his, mom mother, and his mother, and he's been known to have a temper, um, which is not quite the same as the Alec Baldwin thing, because we know exactly what Alec Baldwin said, and yeah. yeah, that he's a real prick. But I think it's an it's that thing where some people are like, all right, so he's an asshole, whatever. Um, yeah, plenty of, like Bruce Willis is an asshole. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, so it, like, sort of, it's people's varying degrees. <laughs> of what they'll accept this is a great this is awful <laughs> great podcast i can't just i i you know what i'm gonna drink some actual water you should probably drink can some you, that actual can you bring me a glass water. of actual water as well <laughs> this is the portion yeah what <coughs> now you're doing it too well here's the thing i've had that since the beginning oh no but like it yeah, I've, it happens to me frequently, so I've learned to kind of like, oh, okay, repress this until the very last second. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's is it like tickling a weird part of your, the back of your throat where you're just like, if I could just clear this off, it would go away, but then it doesn't go away? Oh, yeah, you know what it's like? <laughs> no, what is it like, Dave? Um, <clears throat> we're leaving all this in, right? Yeah, is it like a... a, a does it feel like you have an ovipositor down your throat? It feels like I have like phlegm. Uh -huh. I don't feel any phlegm, and it's like caught in the phlegm. That's gross. <coughs> it's real gross. What did, did you get? Your water? <laughs> I had some in there. You're not gonna need more. <laughs> You're not gonna bring more out. You should probably. You should probably get, bring more <laughs> out. Water is healthy. Let me drink more of this monster. <laughs> <laughs> So Alec Baldwin. How's everybody doing? Long night. How's um, everybody doing? Yeah, so Alec Baldwin, he probably should be canceled, but whatever. Um, all right. It's time to move on to news stories. Sure. Let's do that. All right. This is going to be a toughie. <laughs> Steven Spielberg and the Oscars and the Netflix. Um, I feel like this is oddly complicated. Well, it's definitely been very, really misrepresented in on social media yeah this is every single thing i said is uh spielberg wants to ban netflix from the oscars and it's like no he wants to have the four-week exclusivity window that right movies has to be exclusive in the theater for them to be eligible for the oscars right and part of it i mean the only reasons he's really giving is that you know th this is the this is the industry it's kind of it's kind of in in trouble now, and and also it's like the prestige of the Oscars. Like who gets? But isn't but that kind of arbitrary that? though? Like, the, pre the prestige of the Oscars. Yeah. Like yeah, who gives a shit about that? I understand it just because like Netflix is really moving towards a monopoly, and they need to. Oh well, the other monopoly is going to come after them, which is Disney. Oh yeah, yeah. So, that's not good either. So I mean, <laughs> like, not great, but I yeah, mean, that's not it's, good either. It's a coming. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll so get a lot of fun films in the process. Yeah, um, it's just it would be nice if they destroy each other. Yeah, that would be. If it's like Godzilla, or like let yeah, them fight. That would be ideal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they both fall off a volcano <laughs> into the Pacific Ocean. It. This is why I was bummed about this because I I get yeah it's that. It's Netflix right now, and I know we've talked about it, where there was a reason back in, like, the 50s 
or 30s where we told movie studios, you can't also own movie theaters. Right. That's um, bad. And now that's what we're getting out of streaming is that they're you can't, doing everything. Yeah, you can't own the means of production and distribution. <laughs> exactly. So like now we turn on Netflix and it's like, oh, look at that. Netflix is recommending a lot of their own stuff to yeah. me. Um, so that's a big problem. I think what's happening, though, is that the framing of the Oscars is just going to cost the Oscars, right? Because yeah. the Oscars is steadily going downhill, and they don't understand why, and they keep making a lot of stupid ideas. Yeah. Well, they keep picking horrible best They fucking yes. best do. Ones. It's the goddamn well, that's, worst. That's the thing is they have terrible taste because it's mostly old people still, but their solutions... Because they're like, our ratings are bad. Well, let's just cut out a bunch of the awards. And it's like, no, you idiots. And they're like, like let's get rid of the hosts. It's like, no, these are all arbitrary. Although the, 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 ho- the hostlessness of wasn't yeah. bad. That was fine. I was that, like, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that seemed to work fine. Yeah. But it's arbitrary. Like, it's it, that did seem to work fine. But like the cutting the things. And now they're like, let's do best popular film. And it's like, stop it, you yeah. jackasses. Yeah. I would have been just... okay with best popular film. Like, I been like acknowledge that like there are popular movies that, but like, that's I, nice the but like it doesn't need to be a main award yeah they could do like something for like the highest grossing movies i guess or i don't know what i mean the um, award for highest grossing movie is it's gross. not anything no no i don't <laughs> like, think like an award money i was thinking get. like an in memoriam but reverse for like <laughs> here's here's a bunch of movies that did good this year but the point that when it really of comes your money yeah what it really comes <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. What it really comes down to is they just need more young people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. More young people in the voting academy. It's really the problem with everything, which is they just need less baby boomers involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, And that's it. That's their problem. And they just, and, and this I don't think is going to, because Spielberg is fucking Spielberg. He's great. But he's putting himself up front as like representing a baby boomer who's like i don't understand mm-hmm. streaming let's get you know like that's the problem is yeah, that's that- the vibe that was put out where it's just like well everybody who watches these movies even if you're voting on them they watch them at home right so it's not like you're watching them in this like cinematic experience and like sitting in the theater is like really a part of the right the thing even though a lot of movies yes that's a part of the experience but most people voting they're not doing that no. the scariest thing is that people don't care um that these companies are having a monopoly. I was just... It's annoying. Yeah, I was just doing some research today. <laughs> and um, that merger with Fox that was approved by the, by the Trump administration. Shouldn't oh, have been. Yeah. Um, and it just so happens that Trump is pals with a lot of people over at Fox who made a lot of money from that. Mm. Meanwhile, there were other mergers by companies that he's not so much pals with. Well, it was AT&T and Time Warner. Yep, that yeah. Time Warner, who owns CNN, yep. that he didn't approve. So it's a lot of terrible things are happening. Oh, that merger is still creating... happening. He just tried to fight it. Oh, he tried to fight it. Right. It, it's still going through, yeah. which is still shouldn't happen. None of it should shouldn't happen. happen. And all most people are saying is like, oh, cool. We're going to get the X-Men with the Avengers. It's like, and it's mm... like, that's yeah, this is a bummer. This I mean, is not this that is happen. cool. That is cool. <laughs> but not like this. Yeah, it's and it's that's a the bummer. thing is like, if yeah, if, if Spielberg really wanted to point out like you should start from the uh the standpoint like look netflix destroyed the home video market right that it's going to do the same thing here's to theatrical movies i'm gonna say here's the counter argument yeah um and it's 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 utopia versus dystopia which is that apple for example when it's like oh yeah you're giving away all your privacy to apple in exchange, you're going to get this really easy interface that'll know exactly what you want all the time. We can't trust Apple with our information. <laughs> no, we sure can't. No, we can't. But I get that's the idea of the utopian version, which is like Netflix, where it's like, oh, all our entertainment is just on this one beautiful screen. It's like fucking Star Trek, mm-hmm. where we go and we it knows what we want. That's great. I understand that version of the future that we all want. It's just... Let's make sure it's that and not a dystopian situation where yeah it's I get it like I get the the the, the impulse for that the right, impulse it's... to to want to have just your whole life yeah, very Netflix, easy for Netflix you, very is laid gonna out. become cable and then cable and it's gonna be then it'll someday be as expensive as cable right. is 
And yeah. we're all going to be like, God damn it. When it's the only game left in town, you bet your goddamn ass it's oh, going to be 50 gonna... bucks a month. Yeah. And so yeah. It's... if Disney buys Netflix, that's when. <clears throat> well, no, we should already be taking to the streets about this oh, we, shit. We should have had the guillotines out by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, Disney buying Netflix, everybody will know that's the end. That's the, that's it. Yep. Just burn it all down. Yep. That's burn my down. my my one thing that I, I like guessed right stock wise. Mm-hmm. When Netflix got rid of their DVDs and everyone was pissed, oh, <laughs> I I was just oh, like, yeah. no, that's a good idea, and I put in, I think I put like fifty bucks in Netflix on stocks. Ooh, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and I was like, oh my god! And How now, many shares did you get? I got every like it was like they were cheap, they were dirty. I have like that's the one thing that like got me into like thousands of dollars. That's Are you my rich? One... No, I wish because I only did like what I could afford at the time, which oh, was okay. like barely anything i was just like oh i like netflix oh like, that's oh, a good man. idea so it's like the one thing where i'm like i should have invested a thousand dollars if you had got, if you had gotten like a solid <laughs> like handful of shares of right netflix in oh I, I think i bought like maybe three or four shares a fucking match i would have been yeah. amazing <laughs> but i'll i'll have a habit of doing that with like if i like it i'll buy like if i could afford it one mm-hmm. or two stocks that's where my income level i'm like right. i can't yeah i can't but like you can't afford to speculate no <laughs> no like, you know but I'm, more people i wish more big like, stocks but netflix was the one thing i did right i was just like oh good guess <laughs> yeah i like them i watched them yeah I, that's good that they got rid of dvds you I can will... still it's they're separate subscription you can still technically get things on disc yeah, yeah. But like who the who does that <laughs> i just <laughs> like... had to get icebreaker on dvd because it's not available anywhere anywhere else so or is it amazon that does that it might be, I might, yeah, it might just be. No, Amazon, Amazon has though. the movies. Yeah. Well, like sometimes it'll be like only on disc. I oh, yeah. I yeah, can't yeah. remember if Netflix even has. Like Icebreaker. Only yeah, on like disc. Like Icebreaker. Only on disc. Netflix, um, I remember at the time that they had like the Daft Punk music video movie mm-hmm. for one of their albums that was like a whole, whole anime movie. Oh, and shit. I couldn't get it anywhere except I was like, Netflix. I was like, I like you. I like you guys. You got the things that Sweet. I can't find. They had a really, this is, yeah, they had a really good library of movies. That's the thing. This is why Netflix is... This is the thing is why it's hard for people to get mad at them because they're making shit like Roma. Like, they're making everything. Things that they're big distributing budget, shit like Roma. Well, yeah. <laughs> But they're basically they're doing what studios stopped doing. Yeah, there was a gap. Sh- uh, what you call it? Shonda Rhimes. She made it a point to being like, Netflix is the only. It's like she's made, sh- she's helped with, out with a bunch of movies. The only movie that she's had distributed worldwide is because of Netflix. Right. Because yeah. they like help pe- like people who mm-hmm. like don't always necessarily get those opportunities. Yeah. Get worldwide distribution. Yeah. Because they're in and, a situation where yeah. they don't. Oh, sorry. What were you saying? Well, I was just, finish your thought. I was just there in a situation where it doesn't cost them a thing to a no. thing to distribute. Anything. Yeah, it's, it's their their distribution is instantaneous, and they just have to pay whatever they pay to acquire it. Yeah. So I mean, that's not taking away from the platform, but and yeah, that for sure, that's an argument that should be that Spielberg should probably address is the fact that Hollywood's notoriously gate kept. Yeah. yeah. And it's really hard for for people especially now to get smaller movies seen anywhere yeah. yeah no one's willing to take the risk of doing something weird no which of course is the other side which is like again let them fight disney <laughs> is that represents that the big studio system yeah which owns everything and only makes like a 100 to 200 million dollar giant movies mm-hmm. so it's it's sort of the two sides of it yeah right poor now. hulu hanging out <laughs> Hulu, yeah, Hulu will be there when all the dust settles. Hulu will be like, like hey, so we're making... offering uh, reruns of King of the Hill over here, and everybody's well, like, yeah, let's go to them. We, know, have, we know... have a couple original shows. Yeah. Do like, you know who has here. the majority stake in Hulu? Uh, what, Hitler? Is it Hitler? Fox. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well. well. <laughs> all right. Well, speaking of the apocalypse, they're making a Hello Kitty film. Sure. That's okay. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's weird that there hasn't been one. If there hasn't been one, there's probably been like an anime. I assume. Probably. This is one of those where it's like, well, you can't. You already announced a Sonic live action film. Oh my! You god. You can't shock me. How are we so not? Bad. How are we not talking about that Sonic? 
Oh no! <laughs> what the fuck? That Theodore Rex looking thing? What is that? I'm so excited. <laughs> it I looks don't like want it. I want nothing to do with it. I'm like, well, it, this is one where it's just like, I like old bad movies. <laughs> um, I just watched Dragon Blade, for example. It looks like. Oh my and god! And so I when they, like they announce something it. like this, it's like, oh, I look forward to seeing, hearing the episode. Of How did this get made about this? Where it's like, we need. A, a giant it look, fucking it terrible looks, thing. Yeah, it looks like a canceled fraggle. Like it looks yeah. like a <laughs> it looks like a Muppet they put out in nineteen ninety three. I feel like they wanted to make the furries upset. Like how do we make something that the furries <laughs> don't want to fuck? Because he's almost there. Because he's almost there, yeah. but he's just off enough to be yeah. like, nah. He's definitely not fuckable. You could almost fuck Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh But man. not quite. Oh, he just looks like this weird mutant. He's the he looks. I mean, I think everybody is making this joke, but he's just he just looks like fucking Poochie from the. Simpsons. <laughs> oh, he does. He just looks, and that's Sonic. Like it's just so it's yeah. such lame '90s cool. Yeah, <laughs> like he doesn't have his gloves. Gotta, no, he doesn't. His arms are all blue instead of like the weird like cartoony white with the gloves. Yeah. He's just all like it's just weird. He's got, but yet he decided to keep the mono eye. <laughs> yeah, they're like, well, yep. we can't take away the eye because that's what Sonic is. Right. He has like a weird mono eye. <laughs> yeah, that's how I draw cartoons. I don't know if that's Sonic. it's probably because of Sonic. Maybe. Yeah, um, he also has man muscles. He does. Like he has human man muscles. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's the kind of thing you'd expect to see behind the seventh seal. God. It's like fucking <laughs> Sonic. Is like tails and uh, knuckles and I don't all think them. so. I think it's, it's just, just him. Sonic? I think so. Well that's trash. It's like a dumb like the premise is real dumb you, too. You like, need at least tails. Tails is I don't know why you make that movie out of like they're making like Howard the Duck. Like it's like Sonic yeah. is in real world. It's like why didn't you just make like a cartoon? In the Sonic world, yeah, with that all would those fine with Doctor Robotnik and all, yeah, that. Man, all those characters. Great. So you have a whole cast of characters already. What the fuck is wrong with you? It, the whole premise is like Doctor Robotnik's coming and making all the animals into robots. Like yeah. that's that's a great premise. Go with that. This is fine. I feel yeah. I, I don't know. I guess there's this weird obsession with making things live action. Yeah, Why? I Just mean, like it the, it's cartoon. they're like, well, how do we reboot? They, somebody put up a picture of like Alvin and the Chipmunks. God, what was the other like? the new garfield uh, they were like uh, showing like all these like furry yogi bear yeah yogi yeah like all of that like let's give them actual texture yeah thing that's the trend now and it's are just those... like it's not necessary mm. i wonder if those are making money because i think alvin does. every alvin kid sure as hell yeah did. because yeah. every kid's movie makes money really and, yeah. and like there's unless it's like if <laughs> unless it's like weird and horrific and like traumatizes children Parents will take their kids to any kids movie yeah. because yeah. kids will want to see every kids movie. Yeah, Alvin did well and uh, Smurfs did well, but Smurfs, and, right. Smurfs stayed smooth, right? They stayed yeah, smooth. I think so. They so, also like, started out live action and then in the sequels they were just cartoons. Yeah, because so. yeah. they realized like, what the fuck's Why the, the point? Why the hell did we do that? <laughs> Although Hank Azaria's Gargamel was about the funniest goddamn thing I've ever yeah. seen in my life. <laughs> There's a lot of weird. Those Dr. Seuss movies were some horrifying choices oh, too. Oh shit! Yeah. Why would they do that? Why would they think to cover like Mike Myers with makeup and get, take That's away his right. lips? Because oh my God, be I like, forgot yeah. that. I erased that from my brain. Why because would you they do made that? all the money in the fucking universe on that Grinch movie. Yeah. So like, let's do it again. What a, what a who's, horror show. Who's like? Who's like? Who's the? the palette swap jim carrey who's like when you when you select jim carrey with a different button mike myers who's Perfect. a comedian who will that's put a, a bunch of shit on their face <laughs> yeah. oh that's mike myers career what other legendary susian character we already can have we... the face molds for yeah him. oh my god oh, man, uh. if they would have kept going they would have eventually done eddie murphy yeah that sure would've... he would have been yertle or something Oh, and they did the Lorax, didn't they? Yeah, but that's same poor Doctor right? Seuss. That, that was, was that was I know Doctor Seuss guy, though. That was the, held off I mean, for a very Blue long sky. time when it came to the rights. I think it was something like someone someone died, and they were like, "Aha, it's ours!" Like it was one of those situations. Yeah, with Dr. Seuss. that sounds right. Uh, um, okay, next story. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> this is this is wild, and I I'm I'm hoping it's just not true. Um. 
according to Arnold Schwarzenegger, the budget for Terminator Six is between one hundred and sixty and two hundred million dollars. <laughs> What are they doing? Why? Did they, uh, what do, what do they think what, they're doing? What do they think they have? I just wrote as my things, like, that seems like a lot. <laughs> yeah. You're right, it does. It seems like a lot. Seems like too much for the sixth Terminator movie. Maybe a, a, the sixth Terminator movie, like, the last, like, what, four weren't good <laughs> and didn't really succeed? There are that's the thing. two good Terminator, like, like, like the Alien films, <laughs> there are two good Terminator H- movies. Here's the thing, is that I would understand if the other Terminators made money. Maybe overseas? Um, but generally, have. I believe they were flops. So like, they weren't, funny. they didn't do they had well. Way too much money. So I feel like this is like... This is like uh Maybe it's um, all in the casting. Maybe they got all these like amazing well, actors. Well, Schwarzenegger's in it. probably like he's twenty million. Uh-huh. Yeah. But Linda like Hamilton's maybe the whole back. cast. Maybe the whole cast are like AAA plus actors mm. who are like I yeah. if I'm gonna I, be in a Terminator movie, right. <laughs> I need to be I paid. want thirty million dollars. And they're like, You're getting it. Uh, <laughs> I know Linda Hamilton's back, which Okay. Sure. Um She's not. She's probably not commanding a huge salary. No, um, and if she's you, great. But like, yeah, yeah. I'm more like, oh, Linda Hamilton, don't do this. Yeah. James Cameron once again came out and said, "I promise this one's going to be great." And he like, always you says said that. that about the last one, <laughs> James. And it was PG thirteen. If, if you were casting this movie, I would. I would cast no one and not make the movie. They're just like, here, here's here's ten million for you, Dave, out of this budget. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would. Okay. They have all the money to do this. Well, it depend on the story, because I would change the story. The first thing I would do is I would make the story un- completely unrelated to any of the others. I would make another just a straight up Terminator film where it's like a different, a different time and like a different mission, and it's a different Terminator, and just go back to why we liked the other Terminators. I mean, what if that's it? What if they're doing that? Nah, yeah, well, I've already Arnold seen still. the pictures, and it, it looks <laughs> like it's post-apocalyptic. The problem with Terminator, and I've said this many times, is that they're obsessed with the mythology, yeah, which no one cares nobody about. Cares about nobody. We could not care less yeah. about the rich mythological universe of the Terminator. Yeah, we films. do not care. That's not <laughs> why we like Terminator. No, we liked it because it was an action movie and it was a chase, and it was like a, a slasher first, and then an action action movie, and it had a fun dynamic and a, ro- a robot and a Robots. kid, and it's like yeah, the robot. Yeah, this is it was just the it was the <laughs> yeah, ride. Yeah, that, yeah, doing the, yeah. Just that do- scene is forever burned into my brain. You guys didn't see me. I was doing the arms of the of the dude, right. the Mercury Man looking dude running. She was doing the knife this arms. This is why. Ni- yes, knife arms. Yeah. <laughs> this is why after the first two Terminators, I will say the best one after that is Terminator Three. Um, personally, which is not a good movie, but that was the only the other the sequel. Yeah. yeah, it's the only other sequel where they sort of got what the point was. Where they're like, okay, it's got to be a chase. It's got to be a new Terminator that's like really cool. Yeah. It's got to be all these elements. It's got to be like a character thing where there's clashing. Like they did all of that shit. Yeah. It just was, you know, we didn't good. need it. We didn't need it. I liked the ending of it, um, but we didn't need it. Or they get locked in a bunker with Chris Hardwick. Well, yeah. And I, well, I liked that. Oh, yeah. I liked that the ending <laughs> I, was All everybody. of these are blurred together to me because I'm like, I think I watched, was the last one, what's his name, went evil? The ma- Car- John Connor, yeah. He went evil in yep. the last one? He's, oh, he got yeah, he into did. A I totally he got turned even into a Terminator. For- I was like, I, I forgot I about have, that like, part vague, like, blurry. I'm like, he went... It's he- really bad, he that got- one. Amelia and- Clark was and there's a scene uh, in Sarah a Connor. cave. There's a scene in the cave with Arnold? He- yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's all a big blur. He waits in a cave for, like... Right. I don't know if he... We- I don't know if he waits in a cave. I think they're in, like, a bunker. It's all a blur. It is a very bad movie. Oh, yeah, right, right. He's living in that in that tunnel. In the, it's yeah. a bad movie. What's the Nicolas Cage movie where he goes to Las Vegas to die? Leaving Las Vegas. Leaving, I feel like it's that. This movie is that, where it's like some producer who's just trying to throw his career. This movie's going to be Skynet's actually the good guys. Yeah. <laughs> where it's going to be like, oh, we needed the robots. Oh, uh, yeah. 
It's just, or it's like, I mean, um, we kind of do. Is, now. Isn't that the, the plot of the producers? <laughs> like, right? Is they're trying to tank? Yes. They're yeah, trying it's to the lose producers money. of movies. I think there's someone making this movie who's just like, yeah, let's make it 200 million. This will this will right. get me fired. He's, he's got some sort of insurance policy yeah. or something that's going to make him a billion dollars. Yeah, it's if like this movie flops. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a it's we're watching like a case of fraud. Yeah. happening. It's it's springtime for Hitler. Yeah. It really, like, why would they think to do that? I don't know. Why do they keep making these? Don't know. China's going to be the hero in the movie. Yeah. That's making them all the money. That's what it is, really, is that they're just taking a property that's known and they're milking it as much as they can. Yeah. Sell it overseas. And then when it gets, when it's finally dry, they're just going to reboot it and yeah. like, make the first one again. It's so sad. James same- Cameron needs to... I know he likes money and all. Is he but just he, doing this so he could go under the water again? Probably. I don't think he he doesn't have the rights anymore. I think he? he he's a producer on this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I assume he has. Maybe he doesn't have. He's control. so close to building his underwater like world. Yeah. Thing. He's, gonna build he's a like, sea I just base. need like a few like a few more dollars. He just <laughs> builds actual sea lab. The ending of Terminator Eight will it be him getting in some like crazy <laughs> contraption, being like, ha ha, and like putting on goggles and just. <laughs> Going into the ocean. Going into the ocean in a giant robotic squid. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, Terminator. Just <laughs> stop this. What's the, what's the next bill? Speaking of things that should stop, I guess they're making Sherlock Holmes 3? But they're pushing it back to 2021, so yeah, that's, no, they're not. Technically, technically, the headline is pushed back to 2021. My, for me, I was like, wait, they're making another one? Yeah, and yeah. The, the article said they weren't sure if Downey and Jude Law was going to be in it. And I was just like, well, then why? Why do this? Yeah, just don't make it, guys. Yeah, it's been like 10 years since the last one. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and the last one wasn't good. No, the first one was real good. I liked the first one. The first one was fun. The second one was just like, oh. Yeah, the second one was, I only watched it once, but I remember just being like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. The whole time, like, Although I did bad. like, it, but the second one had a really cool like fight. Yeah, their Moriarty the was cool. Kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That part was cool. But outside of that, I was just like, nah. Yeah. They just, bummer. do they even think about the idea that maybe they can stop like, are they, like, addicts with this and Terminator? Like, has it crossed their mind that they don't have to make another well, one? Well, Sherlock keeps getting remade because it's open source at this point. Yeah. It's one of the yeah. few where it's just, like, anybody can make a Sherlock thing. Yeah. And they're, I mean, you know, Robert Downey Jr. is one of the biggest stars in the world right now. So yeah, like, well, but if they don't get... have him in it, like, if they're still... Right, if he's not in like, it, Like, that's like, what, what I mean, is, is <laughs> if it's just, like... Junior! <laughs> Sherlock! <laughs> like... <laughs> Uh, young Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Just cut your losses at this yeah. point. <laughs> you know what they haven't done, and I don't think they will, is every Sherlock has to have a new spin on it right now. Mm-hmm. And so I, would, I wouldn't mind fucking... Sherlock in space? Yeah. That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> no, I was thinking like was just saying, like, just a work? straight up that. fucking TV show where they just do here Sherlock Holmes. I mean, that's the BBC one. No, it's modern. He's in modern day though. Oh, like yeah. Also, oh. I just mean like here's here's the fucking here's Sherlock. Sherlock. They did yeah. one episode though. They did. It was neat. I like I like the stupid BBC one. It gets real I like stupid. The, I like but, the BBC one. It's yeah, and um, I agree. It's dumb, but I, yeah. I enjoy it, and Good I like those actors. I'm like, oh yeah, you guys are delightful. Great cast. I'll oh yeah, keep watching sure. you guys. What's next? Uh, oh, all right. Some good news involving James Cameron. Uh, there's apparently going to be a 4K remaster of The Abyss. Yeah. Yes. This now is... do True Lies. Yes. For the love of God. <laughs> the Abyss and True Lies. I still have them on the DVD. Because they're it's... not available yeah. on Blu-ray. They're not available. James Cameron is such a fucking prick about this where he's like, I he... want to personally oversee it. He probably is like, this water shit's not accurate. Yeah. Like, he knows now. <laughs> yeah, he's in there painstakingly like. So he's just like, like, fuck, I can't. Like, this is, right. these bubbles wouldn't right. do this. And now he's like, no, I've actually communed with the water aliens now. Yeah. I need to, they need to be more accurate. What's a bummer is they're I They're telling me i need to change it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> true lies i know i don't even know if true lies is streaming right now is true, li- I, true lies is that the it's arnold Schwarzenegger okay, and jamie yeah, yeah, lee that's curtis what, okay. that's one where it's like it I the one rem- with the gun going down the the staircase yes yeah. okay okay yep. there was a i know there was a point in time where i wanted to watch true lies and, I couldn't. and couldn't yep and i had one dvd of it and i put it on and it was such small low resolution and i went online like is there a, D- a blu-ray of this nope like there is 
that movie where what we're gonna lose it we're gonna you fucking can't lose true it. lies yeah and see it's, this is where the netflix comes in and laughs and be like ah you <laughs> right this is why you want us to take over you need us but like yeah. james cameron get on this like i'm glad the abyss is apparently getting remastered it's about fucking time yeah that but classic true movie the abyss do true lies. i mean you'll get it when yeah. james cameron passes away yeah someone's gonna fucking yeah you'd think um all right, moving on. Oddly related to James Cameron is Robert Rodriguez, because they just did a movie together, mm-hmm. whose next film, Red 11, has a budget of 7000 which is the budget of his first movie, uh, no El Mariachi. Mariachi. Yeah. Do it. I assume that's why he's doing this. It's a palate cleanser for I'm, him. I'm interested, but I'm also, I have so many questions. Well, he's probably, I think it's, this reminds me of, um, there's a NoFX album where all the songs are 30 seconds or to a minute. And No Effects was this punk band that got to this point where they were just like, you know, they, they're they're like hitting forty or something, and they realized one day we're too good. We're too good at our yeah. We yeah. we know we know how to play our instruments too much, so they made this album where they basically just like stayed up all night and wrote the songs and immediately played them because they wanted to be more punk rock. So I assume what Robert Rodriguez is doing here, because he loves independent filmmaking. He's his whole career has always all the, the he did this thing called Ten Minute Film School on all his um, DVDs, which was him showing how he accomplished scenes really cheaply oh. or in a really creative way. He loves that idea of being like anybody can make a movie, and so I think what this is is because he made Alita: Battle Angel, which was the opposite of that. I think he's just like I want to go back to making like a fucking. Dirt just, cheap movie. All I could think of was just some like, like the crew. I just keep thinking about this poor crew that either worked for free He's or like probably most of the. Crew. Yeah, I was gonna say okay, that's the thing. Which Robert is fine, Rodriguez, which is great. But all I could think of is I'm like, how? I was like, did you? How did you like pay for the location? Who who made that poster? Because right. that poster alone, like movie posters at that level, and the for like big movies are, are around like five to seven thousand dollars for yeah, a poster yeah. here's what i so hope like, he did who who just got ripped off well, like that and it's up like like oh man here's I mean, what mind i mind you i would do that po- i would i would do yeah. a poster for him why not sure but i'd yeah, be like sure. man i would really like big budget movie money for <laughs> that poster then whatever here's, he did here's what i hope he did which is that he just got other big famous people and said you you want to just try this because it is that's the thing el mariachi's first movie seven thousand dollars there was a lot of like illegal and terrible shit he had to oh, do i'm to sure make. he stole like so many there was places oh yeah locations well and... there was stuff like they they ordered their squibs wholesale squibs being the things that explode to yeah. make bullets oh, no and the thing about squibs is there's different types some are for gravel like shooting gravel some are for being on your body yeah and i i the, the thing i had read was that the way he tested those is he just took his lead actor and just put a bunch of squibs on him and set them off to find out which was which which the gravel ones aren't meant to be on your body yeah. so it like really hurt him like it was there's a lot of that in indie filmmaking where it's just like taking your main actor and being like get in that hole we want to get this shot get in the hole you know where it's just being really which, abusive which is fine when everyone's like dirt poor yeah. and you're just trying to make this movie that's why i'm like nervous about it. i'm like what did you do because y- did you i was like these anybody like i yeah. just don't want anyone to get taken advantage oh, of. i don't i love the concept a lot i really really do i but i just i just feel bad for the staff to be like oh man i like the idea if it was all just like robert rodriguez and like famous actors who can afford i know his brother take a hit. Heard, the article said it was like his brother co-wrote and like is starring in it too so it's like I was like, okay, you got your family involved. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, he can do, like, he has his own, he's got Troublemaker Studios. Right. He's got his own, like, he's made, like, Sin City. He's made entire films on green screen. Yeah. yeah. So that could be I hope it's more, f- it. yeah. The, I had a fantasy for a documentary I always wanted to see, which is you take, like, filmmakers like Tarantino and Spielberg, and then you take a bunch of, like, really good actors and you give them like a shitty smartphone or like a camera and you You're put like, them go. in one place. Yeah. And you say, all right, you have like 24 hours to make a movie. I mean, that's they a great that. concept for a te- like, um, like a like a little mini TV yeah. show where you're just like, all oh, right, yeah. like we somehow you get these directors and you do that like you're like let's and at the end you watch like their five minute film or something right. they do that for film school they do like contests mm-hmm. 
where they'll be like, like use... 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Where they're like, you have 24 hours. You have to use this prop. Go. I want to see like people who have already proven themselves to be good filmmakers and actors have to do that. I feel that. like a lot of them would be too nervous to do it. Right. But they'd just be like, no, you'll see me for the fraud I am. And yeah. what sucks, it'll be those people will be like, no, like you're the one with the, like the fault, the, what's the, the syndrome, the, the, when you think you're worse than you actually imposter. are. Imposter. Yeah. Those, the imposter syndrome folks will be like, no, you'd actually be really good at this. Please do this. <laughs> yeah. This would be amazing. I think some of them would be excited because it's nostalgic for them. It's like going back to like when they were making eight millimeter shit as a kid. Mm hmm. I don't know. And then you have the one who's like, nah, man, I figured out how to do this digitally and it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it saved yeah, me get... so much time. For, for, uh, Soderbergh. Soderbergh's been it's doing It's like that. everybody stand back. I'm going to film this movie on an iPhone. It looks good. <laughs> it came out good. Yeah. Um, all right. We should chug around along. Yeah. Chugging along. Yeah. Um, speaking of filmmakers, Christopher Nolan's next film is being described as North by Northwest meets Inception. I don't know what that means. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know what that means at all. Also, I was like, like, what? Yeah. Also, it's like kind of no shit where it's like it meets Inception. It's like, you mean it was directed by Christopher Nolan? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, you if, can't, he, you... if, he, if he did a movie like a North by Northwest style movie, I would be super into North that. North by Northwest is like fugitive chase with the, with the plane. Yes. Thing? Yeah. Okay. Ends cool. with a fight on Mount Rushmore. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I have not seen it, but I'm aware of it culturally. It's a good movie. Mind you, this is coming from like someone like in his production company. It's one of those things where I don't think he described it this way. Probably not. I think it's some <laughs> dickhead producer. I don't know. It's, um, the, it's the log line. It's the elevator pitch of like, yeah, yeah it's just, I, I don't understand where North by Northwest and, Inter and Inception could possibly intersect unless it's somebody dreaming about being chased by. And maybe a they mean by like special effects wise, like maybe it's like or a because like because like yeah. Inception is kind of like a cross between Inception <laughs> exactly. and North by Northwest. It's kind of it's kind of not non non news. It's just yeah. someone. This the headline should basically be like, oh yeah, we Christopher Nolan no is making still a making a movie. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um. All right, final news story. How do you pronounce this guy's last name? Joe Man... Ah, oh, damn it. Man oh, Manginiello? Okay, the guy from... Just... The guy Mangin from... Big Dick Ritchie. Yes, I was going to say, the guy from, from Magic Mike. Oh! He was also the uh, he was the Flash Thompson in the Sam Raimi spot. Oh, okay. Um, him, Justin Long, Craig Robinson, and Frankie Shaw all joined the Jane Silent Bob reboot that they're making right now. Kevin Smith's shooting it. Um, I don't think... I was like, I, I wrote my notes. I'm not was, sure about this but one. But like, why? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't why? know. I'm not I sure know. why. I mean, I'm not going to hate on Kevin Smith. I'm not going to yeah, either. I mean, it's more just that I really liked Jay and Silent Bob when I was a kid. Yeah. And I I, I think I, I really liked Red State. I really liked his later stuff. Like, I yeah, I'm not going to hate on him as a director. I'm more just like, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Because I don't know if Jay and Silent Bob are... um. I don't know if they work for a new generation unless they just they're updating them in some way that they just suddenly become a little bit more woke. Yeah, because there's always like, room. Yeah. One like, of the, you know what? I would see that. I would watch Jay being a little bit more socially conscious about oh, yeah. like things, but still also <laughs> offensive in the way. Yeah. He's saying it. <laughs> yeah. it seems like they're they. It's definitely a soft <laughs> reboot. Like I would, I would watch that. I would, I would be like, uh, "How are you? How are you tackling like me too?" But like, oh, in your, like gross ass way. But like, he's on your side. That would be interesting. I would, oh, I would be, I would, yeah, I'd be curious. But I don't think it's gonna be that. I think it's yeah. just gonna be how it was. S some details that I noticed is that I think it's a soft reboot. So Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes are playing Jay and Silent Bob in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've seen them in costumes. I kind of want. I, I kind of wish they had just started fresh and it would have been fun to have them do cameos as like cops or something they like the awesome. in the, yeah, in the yeah, style. like dickhead. Um, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm sort of there's a way to, there's definitely a way to do this. It's because we're missing slacker films. Yeah. Teenagers are missing slacker films now. Stoner films, all that. And so if Kevin Smith wants to take a crack at it, that's great. Um, sure. But he might be too old he might be too old he might be um i, I don't, don't know i don't know i mean i'll see it i'm I'm curious about it i'm just uh yeah i'm not sure i'm not, I'm. it's more this because he's in that stage in his directing where he's just like i don't give a shit i'm yeah. making stuff that i want to make yeah so in that regard it's like okay good for you more power to you because he's probably not thinking like is this commercially viable like he probably he's doesn't give a shit oh, no. yeah as you look at his last few movies he's made, like, he's not thinking about that. So at all. yeah, I guess good for so. him. Like, fuck it. Sure, make yeah. the movies you want to make. 
Um, I like that if he had told me like he's just like I just want to hang out with my friends and make a movie make again. A movie, yeah. I'd be like, okay. That's sort of where he's at. Like I, I'm really excited for Moose Jaws, which is named mm. right now Moose Jaws. Whenever he makes <laughs> and it's Moose exactly Jaws. what it sounds like. And it's like, yeah. Like he seems like he's sort of trolling with his with his premises Ooh, right now. Tusk. Yeah. Where he's just like, fuck it. I'm gonna just make things I thought up were really he, high. How is he making money? I don't know if he needs to. I don't know. Where is it coming from? Because uh, he's mean, not, he gave up all his Miramax stuff. You're right. He must. He which must is like most of his movies. I mean, maybe he's just invested really well. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe. He made a lot of money back in the day. Yeah. I hope so. Like, Oh, I he's mean, been directing for cartoon. TV and stuff, too. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. I think, I think he's good. And then that uh, that movie with Top Timothy out. Olfen. Is that it? Or oh no! He, yeah. he made all that money, all yeah, that yeah. money from that, from that movie where he's the the three friends of the dead guy. I still haven't seen that. And I really want to because he tells the story about how Oliphant was mean to him. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's <was> pretty great. <laughs> of course he was. Yeah. Of co- <laughs> <laughs> Look at Timothy Oliphant. Of course he would bully a guy like Kevin Smith. Yeah. <laughs> He's such a bully. He looks like a bully. He looks like a bully. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. All right. Dave, do you have a movie that deserves more hype? I do, and it's to make up for last week's. Oh, God. Um, This was the thing I was talking about last week where I was like, I totally have a better one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, And I'm waiting. This is called Starfish. Mm -hmm. It is uh, got a limited release between March and April. I assume it'll get either a wide release or a streaming release after that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a first time director. He's done a lot of short films. It is a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Mind you, that's only like a handful of uh, reviews. I think it's premiered at a festival. Mm-hmm. It had like, yeah, the trailer had a bunch of like, look at all these things. The festival's like, yeah, about us. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. A bunch a of those little little stars. Laurels. Yeah. yeah. And it looks crazy. It's, it looks uh, good. It looked really neat. Like, I don't, it's like, that would be the type of horror movie I would watch. Yes. Yeah. I'm not even sure it's if it's a horror. Movie. horror yeah. It's, it's apparently a, a lot <laughs> yeah. about grief. It's about a woman who who. It's weird. It's the 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 thing described by um, Gizmodo is uh, a woman wakes up after her friend's funeral for, to find the world is ending. Um, she may be able to save it, and if she can find her, the dead, fr- tapes, her, her, her dead, dead friend, her dead friend left for tapes. her. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like there's like no one else around in the trailer. It's also being described as very Lovecraftian in its visuals. It's turbo Lovecraft. Yeah. There's yeah, a, you see like some shots of like a little yeah, oh, like some, a, a googly monster in the background. And you're like, what the fuck is happening? There, there, there's there's a friggin' star spot or something. In yeah, the but I think what they the way they put it is that it's very much from the perspective of this one character. Mm-hmm. So it's not entirely clear what's happening. It's um, so and it looks point. really beautiful. Looks yeah. beautiful. The poster's beautiful. Um, I think this is going to be one of those movies where don't expect like a straight up. I don't expect crazy it to be. Movie. I don't expect it to even be uh, a traditional narrative. No. no, that's what they're saying. Is like a lot of the reviews are saying like don't expect to be hand fed what's going on. Yeah, this is for people who want to like have to figure it out after. Which I'm. I like that. Yeah. And it doesn't sound like it's so mystery box that it's not going to... No, it doesn't sound insufferable. It, it yeah. sounds like it... Because they were like, it, this. it's not really a horror movie. It's more about dealing with grief. So it's more about emotion and feeling and, and impressionistic and stuff like that. Because there's mm-hmm. crazy, like, eternal sunshine moments where she's on a couch and then a tide washes in yeah. beneath her. Like, it's... Yeah, I think it's... it's Yeah, it's very internal in the yeah. character. Uh, played by... What's her name? Virginia Gardner? who um she's on runaways right or yeah 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 i i've never actually heard of her but i think she was man she was on something yeah um and i've heard nothing but praise for her performance in this um i hope this is a movie that actually has the balls to just have the one character i think it mostly does but not completely there is a flashback yeah Yeah. even yeah the reviews are saying she's most of the movie it's just her but her and i guess a turtle she talks to a turtle (laughs) um so she has to carry a lot of the movie. Um, yeah, it looks really exciting. It looks like it's probably a breakout film for the director and I guess the actress, although she's done some other things. Mm-hmm. When does um, this come out again? It's We can see it here in Los Angeles, I think, in April. Okay. There's a list. You can look it up. There's a list of what the cities it's going to. It's like a touring release, from what I can tell. Yeah. 
Well, if um, it's on a Friday, I could see it with you guys. Yeah, I'd love to see cool, this yeah, in we theaters. Gotta see this. But I think it'll be available to stream probably soon by, after. Probably by May. It's the beauty of streaming. Yeah. Um, yeah, everybody check out the trailer. Because this is a, another one where, like, yeah, we're describing it all right. But the trailer is what you, you see it. And it's really well edited trailer. And the visuals are really good. Yeah, the trailer is, like, moving. Like, yes. Yeah. It's weird. Even yeah, though you there feel is like a... you're watching a short. But I still don't. It's not like you know what the story is. Yeah. You're just like, oh, okay. Like, there's some tapes. And mm-hmm. it's eerie and yeah. beautiful and <laughs> she has she might save the world but but it might is the world just in her that. head yeah, like yeah. i don't know but it's yeah it's very dreamlike and and just neat looking and in yeah. the middle here's cthulhu yeah yeah little, it's like, a little, a little, a little, a little cthulhu. thing i was like Ooh. Or, i was like i don't know and i was like well Love everything that. else makes me want to see this movie though <laughs> yeah all right that's a that's a so it's definitely a, a so uh, Star, thank you for joining us. Of course, this is for... fun. I'm glad to be back. Do you have anything you want to plug? Um, please read my webcomic, Ruby Whipple, uh, rubywhipple.com, spelled with an I. Um, and follow me on Twitter at uh, StarlineX. Do all those things. Yeah! Do all those things. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah and uh, if you guys want to support us, you can head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed where you can kick in a couple of bucks and get access to some exclusive uh, podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Fox Mulder is a Maniac. Which art, uh, which Star did the art for. Yeah. She did. Yeah. Yeah, I um, want to make more stuff. That's right. Yeah. I got to make more stuff. <laughs> yeah, you do. I just all of a sudden I was like, oh, yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, we also got other fun stuff on there. Uh, you can... Yeah, you you just check it out. We got some fun stuff. We, yeah. we we sometimes do movie nights with patrons and things like that. So check we're it gonna out. probably have some T Public discounts coming up. Too, yeah, for different tiers. For different tiers. So I've been told by T Public. By the way, that store link is tpublic.com dot com slash store slash Gameplay Employer. You can get T shirts, some of which were made by Star. Yeah, yeah. some of which were made I'll by other that. people. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, listening. And I think that's it. Yeah. (laughs) Say goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. 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 Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can follow him on Twitter at at the Corlew, C-O-R-L-E-W, and find more music at shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our artwork is produced by Justin Brown. You can follow him on Twitter at at Justin T. Brown, and find more of his artwork at artnessbyjustinbrown.com and justinbrown.info.